Hello, you all. I want to say thank you all for coming out um, today. My name is Antoinette Roundtree. I go by Ann. And of course, I'm here because we realize that we don't have a black and white issue. We have a system issue. Once you get those badges on you, you become a superhero and you can do whatever you want to whoever you want. And that needs to stop. So I am here today to show support. And I want to thank Agitation Rising, the Bloomington Normal Communist Party for organizing, the NAACP and Conexiones Latinas de McLean County for supporting us and providing speakers. I want to introduce our first speaker, Hassan, who's a member of the Bloomington Normal Communist Party, speaking on Tyree Nichols. Good afternoon. Tyree Nichols was born June 5th, 1993. Like many of us, he enjoyed Starbucks, taking pictures of sunsets, visiting the local park just outside of Memphis. He loved skateboarding, was a passion of his. Had been skating since he was six years old and he was survived by his mother, Rovon Wells, his father, Rodney Wells, and his four-year-old child. On January 27th, 2023, Tyree Nichols was returning home from the park he liked to visit, and when he was ambushed, and stopped at a stoplight by officers of the Memphis Police Department. These officers were members of a specialized unit within the police department known as Scorpion, Ooh. allegedly formed to combat street crime and gang violence. The officers claimed they stopped him for reckless driving, which is an accusation for which there is no evidence. From the very first second of the released body cam footage of the incident, officers approached Tyree's vehicle, screaming, guns drawn, and threatening Nichols, saying, quote, you're gonna get your ass blown the fuck off. Tyree is violently ripped from his vehicle by multiple officers, and for the next minute, attempts in vain to comply with the conflicting orders he is given. He is thrown to the ground, pinned down by officers. While on the ground, he is ordered to get on the ground. He's told to show his hands while his arms are restrained by multiple officers. While verbally agreeing to cooperate with officers, he is tased and eventually pepper sprayed while offering no resistance. After being sprayed in the face, Tyree is able to break free and flee. Officers pursue on foot and call for backup. On the body cam footage, one officer is heard saying, I hope they stomp his ass. When officers catch up to Tyree less than 80 yards from his mother's home, they beat him, pepper spray him, even more. Nichols yells, all right, all right. Still trying to comply with the officer's conflicting orders when he is again pinned to the ground, pepper sprayed, kicked repeatedly, and beaten with batons as he screams for his mother. When medics finally arrive, no aid is rendered to Tyree Nichols as his body's propped up against a police car. He is questioned while medics stand by and chat with police. Nichols struggles to hold himself upright against the police car and is repeatedly told to sit up while his neck is broken in three places, if I remember correctly. The officers talk celebrating their victory, accusing Nichols of being high as a kite and claim Nichols reached for an officer's weapon. Tyree Nichols was given 71 commands by these cops during the approximately 13 minute period. Many of them were contradictory, such as being told to get on the ground while pinned to the ground by officers, being told to show his hands while his arms were pinned by officers, and being beaten and pepper sprayed despite offering no resistance and trying desperately to the best of his ability to cooperate with these officers while they murdered him. His mother told ABC News that 
She could feel her son's pain in her stomach at the time. After lying on the ground in agony for over 24 minutes, Nichols was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Tyree's mother, Rovan Wells, said, quote, when I walked into the hospital room, my son was already dead. They kept him alive, or they put him on breathing machines, just for my satisfaction, I guess. But my son died January 7th. Doctors pulled the plug on January 10th. Though five of the officers involved were terminated and arrested on charges, second degree murder, they were all released on bond. Ooh. This is who the police are. This is what the police do. The police will enter a building with an active shooter to save their own kids and then leave and stand by for over an hour, shielding their own lives while elementary school children are murdered in Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde, Texas. And yet they have no problem kicking in your door in the night and shooting you in your bed, like Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, or Donovan Lewis, Columbus, Ohio. Police attacked in full riot gear, a completely peaceful protest, violin vigil in remembrance of Elijah McClain, another soft soul mindlessly brutalized and executed by law enforcement and EMS personnel of Aurora, Colorado. And in Washington, D.C., where they attacked protesters for George Floyd journalists, for George Floyd, journalists indiscriminately attacked with rubber bullets and tear gas so they could line up and pose with fascist President Donald Trump for a photo in front of a church. The police in Washington would also fail to take proper measures to secure the Capitol and drag their feet providing backup against the failed January 6th insurrection attempt led by fascist President Donald Trump who despite also having stolen state secrets is still free and running for president in 2024. This is who the police are. An anti-democratic paramilitary force designed to protect property, not people, and exert authoritarian control over the population, especially the black population of the United States. Fuck the police! In fact, the institution's very origin is as slave patrols whose explicit purpose was to enforce white supremacy and instill terror in the black population. It's no surprise the police behave more like an occupying army from their inception. That is who they're meant to be. In fact, Memphis police chief, Sarah Lynn Davis, participated in an Israeli exchange program in which she trained in policing techniques and practices with Israeli security forces. Oh. The same practices and techniques they use to violate the rights of Palestinians. Practices and techniques that are blatantly unconstitutional in the United States. This is who the police are. It's no surprise that this is the beast we are facing. And it's nothing new or isolated or unique. It's the same beast responsible for the death of Tyree Nichols, is responsible for the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Eric Garner, Orlando Castillo, Sandra Bland, and Amadou Diallo. It is the same white supremacist beast responsible for the brutalization of Rodney King in 1992, for the bombing of Move in 1985, for the Milai Massacre in 1968, for the Tulsa Massacre in 1921, and the draft riots in New York in 1863. It's the same disgusting beast responsible for the Sand Creek Massacre in 1864, responsible for the death of thousands of Native children in residential schools between the United States and Canada, and responsible for the genocide against the Native people so brutal and so inhumane that it inspired the Nazis in their Holocaust against the Jews, the Roma, trans and gay people, people with disabilities. It's the same monster that destabilized the governments of Argentina, Brazil, British Guyana, 
Bolivia, Chile, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Uruguay. It is the same boot that has been on the necks of black and brown people through the COINTEL program, the same boot that's been on the necks of indigenous people, disabled and gay people, trans people, and the impoverished people the world over. It's the same boot on all of our necks, from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C., and from Memphis, Tennessee, to the Gaza Strip. The imperialist machine being protested against here in America by you and me, and activists across the country, is the same machine being fought against by the brave young men young men and women of Iran who stand to lose so much by protesting against the brutal and authoritarian regime they live under. The struggle for women's rights, for freedom of expression, the right to exist, for democracy, for a future for our children, and to be recognized as human beings at all. It is what connects us. This is what the beast doesn't want you to see and definitely doesn't want us to talk about. And how long until we talk about how nothing has changed? How long until we are brave enough to decide to stop pretending like the police are anything but the white supremacist terrorist institution that they are and start speaking critically and honestly about the masters they serve? And how long until we start putting pressure, real pressure, on this brutal and tyrannical system and send our message to these people in the only language they seem to understand? And I'm not talking about marches and rallies and protests and palms because as powerful as our words and these demonstrations are and have been in the past, it's been falling on deaf ears for decades. All of that has been accounted for. Factored into the equation, we wince and repeat and go through the same cycle all over again, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Where are the consequences for killing us when the cops can get recorded in the act by cell phones and body cams, CCTV footage and still always be given the benefit of the doubt the law, in the eyes of the law and the media. Where are the consequences for these cops and their departments? And what does it cost them when they can just get administrative leave, keep their jobs, get hired somewhere else? And the police departments get increased budgets the next year. It doesn't even cost them the bullets they shoot us with. Still, they tell us to be peaceful. Still, they are quick to come down on protests for rioting and looting as if our ancestors weren't looted from Africa. And as, and as, they have, and as if they haven't looted their culture, looted from their families, and from their mother's arms for centuries. As if they don't loot migrant labor and middle class labor to this day. Enough is enough. It is time now, while America sleepwalks into fascism, to put into practice what we have learned from history. It is time to call evil, evil, and it is time to stop caving to the fear that has been weaponized against the kind and soft souls of the world and used to divide us all of us, all of mankind, from ourselves. We must come together statewide, nationwide, worldwide, to look the demonic forces of greed and fear in the eye and say, take your boot off our neck or lose your foot. We must commit to undying resistance against the forces of evil like our ancestors did to get us here in the first place. Tyree Nichols is on his way home from taking pictures of the sky.
Tyree Nichols was unarmed, unprepared, alone, defenseless. There was no level of surrender or compliance that would have saved his life that night. He posed no threat to the system of oppression whose boot we all live under. He offered no resistance to his murderers. It is our responsibility to resist this beast. Because the police have no obligation to protect and serve. It is our responsibility to resist when they brutalize and murder and wage their war on us, on the beast's behalf. Resist for Tyree Nichols. Resist for every soft soul like his that could be next, and it could be any of us. Continue to resist with rallies and marches and with protests in the street. Continue to resist in the courtrooms and at the ballot boxes. Resist wherever we can, and whenever we can, and wherever we must, and with every tool we have. Resist until the beast is tamed or put down. Justice for Tyree Nichols. Much Hassan, we definitely know who the police are.